Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever it is, wherever you are, welcome to Good Values Podcast. In this episode, I speak to someone who I made friends with a few years ago. I think it was three years ago, and I was starting university, and this woman was in a different discipline to what I was, and she was doing ceramics, and I was doing fine art, and we made friends whilst wandering around and looking at different galleries around the town, and it was interesting. We got along really well, and since then, I've spoken to her several times, and I was really happy to have her on as a guest, so... This episode, please welcome Sarah Edwards. Would you mind introducing yourself for the viewers, please? Okay, yeah, I'm Sarah Edwards. A uh, ceramic artist. I'm just recently graduated from Glindua and about to start my master's as well. And um, my work is mainly all based around female forms. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, fantastic. How is it you got started in art? Did you start from a young age or did you kind of, did it come to you at a later age where you really got interested? No, in I've always been art mad basically even at a yeah. young age that was I had a my toy box was basically a craft box oh, <laughs> making making stuff coloring um all sorts of things and one of my favorite things to do mainly as a teenager I just used to get a big like a2 piece of paper do a big squiggle mm. all over it <laughs> oh, and amazing. then I used to do little patterns and and everything in each little little box little circle oh, shape wow. So you just spent hours wow. doing that. <laughs> so when did you get into ceramics? Was that a young age or was that more teenage or was it more recent? That's quite recent, yeah. Um, I did do a bit of like salt dough and that kind of thing. So I was used to the, you know, the squishiness and creating something like that. Mm. And then I took a night course in Glendua and I just fell in love with it there. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Uh, I started doing it on the, on the wheel yeah and um, he basically recommended me uh to, to do the the full um degree with applied art so yeah that's how oh, it started <laughs> that's amazing and because you briefly summarized at the beginning that your artwork is based on the female form could you elaborate about your about your kind of studies and your your process and your work really for us yeah um well obviously i'm interested in the female form in general and i just I like putting out there, you know, just building um, co confidence up, I suppose, in in one way or other, and just getting across the you know, taboo subjects and the things that aren't really mentioned that much uh, with women, and yeah, just putting, trying to get those type of messages out there um, of the daily stresses and problems that women have to go through daily really? from little things to to the big things <laughs> yeah and am i right in thinking that you even include writing on your ceramic sculptures yeah the the my la the series i've just done um it's all um so that the, the outsides of them are all um, it's like graffiti style, really. Mm. So it's just layers and layers of um, a variety of words. Um, this series all relating to body positivity and female sexuality. Um, so I've picked, I think there's 25 words altogether, and I've just slapped them on and just layered them up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so That's basically, brilliant. every time you look at the piece, you see a different word or a different image because I've put loads of little patterns and things on there yeah. and there's a few secret little uh, words and things that is there? some people have noticed really? and some haven't yeah oh that's <laughs> brilliant so it's almost like little treats for the keen observer uh, yeah. yes exactly <laughs> excellent oh that's interesting um do they vary in scale as well do you make large and small or are they all around the same size like what how do you work that way yeah i've done a variety of sizes they start from I think the smallest one's probably about 10, 15 centimetres. 
Uh, the biggest ones, um, well, that was about that big, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I don't know, I, I couldn't even say in inches, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I so, do a variety of sizes so to mix it up. A so, you don't bit have a preference with scale? Do you, are you kind of open to go as large and as small in the future? Oh, yeah, or? definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think the, the, the larger ones that I've done at the moment, hmm. um, they are my favourite, uh, yeah. I'll say, the, the nice scale I like to work with because you've got mm. more. Um, you can do more with that yeah and obviously you can get more words on it more you know pop <laughs> yeah absolutely oh brilliant yeah. well but I'd love to try do some bigger ones again as well <laughs> would you I mean how big would you actually go would you take on a real ambitious you know large scale piece that's almost you know life-size or something would you ever I would love to do a life-size one definitely yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic that'd be amazing with all your graffiti all over it as well you'd be able to hide so many little messages in there and things oh yeah <laughs> definitely <laughs> fantastic oh that's really interesting and i'd like to know as well um who is it that influences your work um i'll say my main two favorite artists i can say is uh grace and perry mm. and andy warhol because i like they, they yeah. do a lot with um with storytelling and working with people and getting different mm. messages across and that they both all their work is very brightly colored um yeah. and that's a big thing with me i love color <laughs> yeah excellent so what type of colors are your favorite to use because one of the questions i like to ask people is do you have a color palette um to be honest all the pieces that i've done they've all got a variety of all different colors mm. um that's mainly because one of the looks I wanted to go for was where these type of labels with women start. And for me, it took me back to being in school, in the school toilets, because everyone yeah. writes different things on the toilets, you know, so-and-so yeah. was here, or yeah. I love so-and-so, you know, or, oh, you know, so-and-so was a slag, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, you get like random phone numbers and just little yeah. doodles. So I wanted to keep that kind of effect. Yeah. And obviously, it's not the same pen that you keep in the toilets. Everyone's got a different colour, different type of pen, different size or markers and that. So mm. that's, I wanted to go for that type of look, really. And um, so that's why it's all, it's all handwritten. I haven't used stencils yeah. or anything. Um, but I try to do it in different well, fonts and different colours, different sizes and and yeah. so it's like it's been added to over the years yeah. and the years, just like we, like women ourselves, we hear yeah. these things uh, called us and yeah. mentioned all the time. So it's like the, the outer skin of a woman, yeah. <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, I mean, I did hear a theory when I was quite young that title dictates behaviour, which is to say, if you get called something enough times, you'll start to identify as that thing to a certain extent. And it can have a real effect exactly, on you. yeah, yeah. It does, it does indeed. And mm. um, that's why one of the main words I wanted to, to stand out. Uh, well, there's two words to be honest, but the, one of the main ones was taboo. Yeah. Um, going with female sexuality, mm. it's quite a taboo subject, and I don't see why it should be. No. <laughs> because we uh, enjoy the same things as men do. We have the same pleasure as men do. But they get they get looked at a bit different uh, than women. I find they get like cheered on and yeah. they get called players and yeah. things like that. And if women do the same thing, they're sluts, they're whores, they're slags. Yeah. <laughs> and no, we're just having the same enjoyment as men do. So why should it be a taboo subject? <laughs> yeah, it's a real double standard, isn't it? I want to go quickly back to inspiration because. As much as I ask about influence and inspiration, I always am curious because my influence comes a lot from cinema. And I wonder if there's any oh, yeah. other aspects of <clears throat> media or just life in general that influences your creative process at all as well. Um, well, before I did the series um, for my d degree show with the female forms, I do a lot of uh, lino printing. Mm. So I, I was using... Um, like real life photos for me references yeah. and it's all erotic art 
So I just love working off the female body. Mm. And like personally myself, um, I've had a couple of, you know, the lingerie shoots when you see them on offer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've done a few of them. And I just love the, the photos and the poses and just yeah. how just... Just by moving one arm or one leg, it can just look so different and so beautiful. Mm. Just seeing the, the human figure, or mainly the female form for me. I do prefer doing the yeah. female form. <laughs> I yeah. have done some male ones as well. So I was curious because I said about um, how cinema affects my artwork. Is there any kind of film or television show that you think is really either influential or you just think gets it right when it comes to anything related to your type of work? Um, well, it wasn't stuff that I'd watched before I made um, my last series of stuff, but some of the Channel 4 documentaries that that are on at the moment, I just I think find them so fascinating and interesting. Yeah. Um, one of the main ones that stood out for me is 100 Vaginas. I don't know, I've not heard of it. It's worth a watch because it's quite interesting. Wow. It's basically this one lady, and I'm really sorry, I can't remember her name. Right. We'll insert it. We'll insert <laughs> but it afterwards. Yeah. She um, basically uh, took lots of photos of different people's vaginas. And it's the, the documentary on it, and it's um, like why she was doing it and how different people reacted to it and mm. the people's reactions to actually seeing themselves because yeah. obviously it's not something you really look at <laughs> no, very yeah. often yeah. <laughs> and then um, she just done a big display about it after and um, it was just fascinating to watch mm. the amount of people that had never you know got a cheeky mirror and just had a quick look <laughs> to see what they're yeah. like and um, they see the photos after and it just shows as well how no single body is the same. Everybody is different mm. and unique. And yeah. women should embrace that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because absolutely. everyone, I feel like everyone today, they just want to be like the, the celebrities. Mm. They just want to be a size eight. They want big bum, yeah. big chest. Yeah. Um, just you know, fit into a mold. Skin And yeah. life doesn't work like that no that's <laughs> no one's true. gonna be like i don't know kim kardashian you know for example no. you're never gonna be that type of model look so just yeah work with what you've got <laughs> so if you come up uh with against or not against but have you come across body dysmorphia in in this type of thing where you know people feel a kind of rejection of their own image and their uh, yeah. body and things like that yeah yeah, definitely. Because obviously with the, the dissertation mm. um, that I've done and just working on this uh, series of uh, work I've just done for the degree show, the amount of research I put in, and it's it's really upsetting yeah. some of the things you come across from, because obviously I read personal stories and doctor's mm. reports and mental health of just general youth today. And it's always, yeah. it, I'm not saying um, men don't go through this, but the majority is females. <laughs> yeah. Because they get it yeah. from both sides. <laughs> yeah. There's a, a, a different pressure on men, isn't there, really? There's a different standard on those. Yeah. Because um, they go through it. I'm not excluding men out of this scenario at all. Yeah. But I'm obviously, being female, I want to focus on the female form. Mm. But like men go through it as well. They don't think they're good enough. But men, yeah. they also shut things out a lot more and they don't speak to people a lot more. Mm. They're more bottled up than right. some women can be. Yeah. When it comes to um, the more erotic side of, of sexuality, is there any artist who specifically will influence or inspire you, even if it's not really a direct influence on your work, just something who has made an impression upon you to, to a good extent? Yeah, I say... Uh... It's like Carol Sheeman, she's one that comes to mind uh, straight away. Um, it's more photography based, but it's all very erotic. Everyone's everyone's naked, everyone's enjoying themselves, mm. there's some chains about. and yeah. um, She just showed people enjoying themselves in that type of environment, yeah. which I found really fascinating because you don't really see that type of thing 
out there. It's not something you'd go into a museum and see. No. I always space, think... But, well, you still type have, of museum, maybe. <laughs> exactly. depends on the exhibition, doesn't it? But I always think it's still a composition as well. So even if it's something where you're not used to seeing that type of imagery, it's been put together in a way which is going to be visually impactful and it's going to be balanced and it's going to yeah. have, you know, a sense of beauty to it in several aspects. Even if you're a bit like, whoa, that's way further than I'd ever go. Because some people, you know, it varies from person to person. Yeah. There's always something where you can go, actually, the light is just beautiful on how they've captured the forms, and things like that. So I always think there's always yeah. several aspects to image making, regardless of what medium. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. And then, sorry, did you say there's there's some other uh, people as well on the aside from the photography or, or as well as? Uh, one thing I find is not so much the erotic side, but just the the female, uh, sorry, mm. the human form side, is um, Mo Jupe. He uh, makes um, I say more abstract um, mm. figures. Um, but that's how I got started making mine. Is watching a few of his videos. Um, in the form making process, it's like oh, I've never thought oh, of doing brilliant. it like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that that had a big influence, and it was just you know just poking and prodding away you can get you just that little something different and a few techniques I uh, picked up off yeah. of him as well. Because he's very interesting to watch because he's got a few um, videos on mm. YouTube which is quite interesting how he goes about making So how do, is that photography or is that how does he, he or is it sculpture or what does he make? Sculpture? It's sculpture yeah so it's it's all oh. clay work yeah so you'd get, get a dowel mm. and start with a, a thick bit of clay on it and he just rolls it out and just gets the you know the wideness for the thighs and then just takes yeah. it off and then you just kind of piles the rest of it up and it's just it's really oh, interesting wow. starting off um being um more based on the pottery wheel, mm. uh, all the hand building. I've watched lots of different things on yeah. different ways to yeah, create the female form. So. Yeah. So are you into <laughs> more... Jen's up mainly working off plaster moulds. Oh, really? Sorry. No, it's okay. Um, I was just going to ask, if you're, are you more drawn to figurative or abstract, or is it a bit of both? I mean, do you have a preference? Um... Not really. I do like both, um, but I do prefer, I'd mm. say, the more abstract. Because I like, um, like the series I've just done. Um, I just wanted it to be the simplest type of form, but immediately, obviously, female. Yeah. So I went mainly with the the torso. Mm. Uh, side of it, there's not many limbs <laughs> or no. no heads or anything like that. But just from one glance at any angle, you can tell mm. it's a female. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. but very simple as well, because mm. some of um, some of them it's just literally like an hourglass figure, and then you just make. Yeah. Or some of them I haven't even put chest and like um, bum cheeks and that on them, but you can yeah. still tell it's a female figure, which that's what. Yeah. I, I like. I didn't want to go too too detailed because obviously mm. the the decoration on this series is the main influence of it. But just just was such a simple form, mm. just making it look female. That's what yeah. that's what I love. <laughs> really appeals to you is to try and simplify it almost to show that iconic yeah, shape. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Iconic shape, definitely. Oh, and there's so many different ways you can you can do it because well mm. like i said before nobody is the different is, is the same everyone's different no. everybody yeah. is unique so the possibilities are literally endless for for that yeah. type of figure <laughs> that type of form. yeah i've even heard an anatomy student say on a podcast that everyone has a different number of ribs and they said it's not mm. you know there, there won't be a uniform number where it's like, oh, it should be this amount. They say it, it just isn't. It's just it changes yeah. from person to person. What are you given? <laughs> yeah, which I honestly thought it would be fairly consistent, but they said, no, it's, it's not even consistent, really, mm. which is uh, quite telling how we just make these assumptions of there will be a type and then there will be mutations. But we're kind of yeah. all mutations of the same species, aren't we? We're all 
yeah, different exactly. amounts. So, but yeah, <laughs> it's very interesting. I wanted to ask as well, what do you see in your future of art making? Um, well, one of the things I am hopefully going to be working on soon is still keeping the uh, the graffiti style and the textured effect and the the thought that again every time you look at a certain piece you see something different and every mm. word you read has a different effect on different people and um, so I'm going to be doing a big wall mural with mm. um, hopefully a few other students as well so we're working on getting a grant for that at the moment um, yeah. it's all pieced together and again I'll keep the female form Fantastic. in it but obviously the words will change yeah. completely going with um, mm. well, well, I suppose, well, whatever theme you decide on for, for that actual piece but yeah. it'll still all be wow. get you thinking yeah. and looking have you seen the wall do you know how big it is yet do you know no, how big the wall is that's yeah. still under debate yeah. at the moment yeah yeah but, I don't mind the bigger the better. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that changes what's possible, doesn't it? Really, you know. So. Definitely, yeah. Mm. So it does take a lot, a, a different type of, um, I'd say, a different type of person to understand today's like modern fine art, mm. um, which which was very interesting. I'd say going back to my degree show, obviously mm. not in um, my room, but like the fine art room, photography, and all um, the other rooms that were there, walking around with my family. You could see their faces, mm. they were looking like, what is that meant to be? Like, Have you read the artist's profile and the concept around it? And then they'd read it like, oh, yeah, I can see why they've done that now. And I think yeah. a lot of people, you need to understand the reasoning behind the art and the concepts and the context behind it Yeah. before you can understand mm. a lot of today's fine art, which was, which was quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, it is. my family not being from the art world and it was like mm. why is there a brain and a cigarette on the floor <laughs> 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 have you read it like, oh it's to do with uh, mental health you're like oh I see now so, <laughs> and so a lot of people yeah. if they go to a museum or they see things online they'll just look at it mm. and dismiss it straight away so I think yeah, it's um it's reading into about the artist to understand mm. and yeah. the, the, the concept of why they've come up with that piece makes a big difference yeah. to how people today see art. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, part of my research for my dissertation was um, a book where it went into semiotics, which is how to read a piece of work. And yeah. I never knew the word semiotics. And when I read about it, I thought this is really important is how to read an artwork so that, you know, if you're looking at something, there are clues and certain symbols to help you figure out what they're trying to get at. And a yeah. lot of the time when people see things, they'll just reject it because it's not familiar enough to kind of, you know, see it. But, yeah, familiar enough. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But even with old paintings, sometimes you'll see the beauty of the painting, but you won't necessarily see the meaning. And it takes someone who guides you around the gallery to say, oh, well, this was to do with this, you know, political thing that was going on or whatever. Or this was a dispute with this. And it's really symbolic in this piece yeah. because of, you know, some aspects. And it's funny because that really educates us on how to see beyond the surface level of a piece of work. Yeah. But I have been having this discussion because I'm a bit conflicted at the moment. My concern is that fine art, to me, was initially, because of it's predominantly paintings and drawings that I engage with, it was yeah. always beauty first, concept second. And now yes. I feel like it's flipped, where it's kind of you're hit with a concept first and you have to get past the concept to see the beauty. And before it used to be the beauty that you have to get past to see the concept. And yes, that is that's what I true. think is so challenging about it. I think with Van Gogh, you know, it's, there'd just be a rejection of it until it was embraced. Yeah, Van Gogh, and then yeah. it couldn't be... a lot of his is uh, mental health uh, related, isn't yeah, it? Um, absolutely. Until you think of that, well, obviously, yeah. uh, with the ear and everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Until you think of um, what his mind was like when he was painting mm. like, um, the Starry Night, for example. Yeah. It's, um, it's just, it hits you as concept in, first, yeah. isn't it? So I suppose yeah, exactly. yeah. we see it as beauty now, but it's it's less challenging to us now. So I'm wondering yeah. whether 
my concerns about concept first, beauty second might be outdated in you know a decade or so when we look back and say, but it was all yeah. beautiful. You just couldn't see it as beautiful. It was just concept. Well, exactly. Record. Van Gogh, uh, Van, yeah. Van Gogh, um, straight away, he wasn't famous in his lifetime. <laughs> no, he's one of the like, world's most famous artists. Well, most influential. And he, he never got to see that. Just all... No. Yeah. So yeah, we didn't appreciate tragic. his work until after yeah. he'd gone. So that's that's like exactly what you're saying, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And so it's a weird ongoing conflict where I do wish to see more beauty first in work to try and bring in the public. Because I feel as though fine art has gone to more of a collector's and exhibitionists, not exhibitionists, sorry, an exhibition's kind of platform where it's for, yeah. you know, the middle class, upper middle class. It's very kind of cultured. Whereas... I want it to be something which uplifts the public, and makes them feel inspired that they're represented in the work. Yeah. And um, and it may just be my perception of it, but I feel as though there's a disconnect currently between the public perception of art and what art is trying to do with yeah. its Yeah, well, that's interesting. Because one thing I found uh, lockdown has helped with, mm. uh, <laughs> which is a bit of a dodgy thing to say because it's not the best uh, subject that's our full time <laughs> yeah the um, amount of people that just got into different arts or got back to art that they used to do during lockdown mm. and then if you see uh, i don't know yeah. if you watched it yourself grayson's art club which i absolutely love <laughs> Oh, it's worth i should watch do i should look that up because it's yeah. just that the public sending their artwork in of all different types, mm. all different ages, all different skills. And it's just amazing yeah. to see. And some of them were just yeah. like, why aren't you famous already? Because some of them are just amazing. <laughs> yeah. And they just got regular yeah. jobs and they don't do anything with it. And it's like, that's shocking to me. If I could draw or create something that yeah. stunning. Yeah. <laughs> There's a woman locally who I told before starting the course um who she's a painter and she's now and you know a teacher but she should have been a painter to me because i i look at her work and i said you should be famous and she was flabbergasted she was just she thought i was just being kind but i said you know me i won't say that falsely i think you should be famous because your work is (laughs) it's just got this weird like um Oh, what do you call it? Where it's kind of like, is it a synergy where it all kind of works together to make a yes, kind of yeah. continuous reality that she's building with every painting. And nice. uh, and it's just sad that she's kind of got to this point of, I have to make a living. So painting is just something that I do on the side. And, yeah. uh, and it should be something where she is really given a platform because she's such a big personality as well. But yeah, uh, yeah so I know what it feels like to say, it's hard famous. to get out there as an artist yeah. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Even absolutely. if you've been to art school or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well she had and she had a bit of a rough time as well at art school. Mm. It's a weird it can be a weird different experience depending on who you are and what your sensibilities are through art school, I yeah. found. Um very strange. But to go on to more of a positive, I've got certain <laughs> questions that I always ask the guest because it's always relevant to every guest to me. Because um, okay. <laughs> as artists, you are observers, and you're people who retain certain things that you find important in the world. So I like mm. to ask, what is the most beautiful thing you've seen today? Beautiful thing I've seen today? Yeah. It's going to be really cheesy. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it was um, my partner was over with his daughter because um, mm. the big boys have gone to school. And I was just standing outside. I'd just given her a bath and she just looked at me and she just walked straight over to me and gave me a hug and thanked me for doing her hair. And it was just the look on her face. Yeah. It's just adorable. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> that's like, a beautiful answer. Me, Thank you for doing my hair for, for sports oh, day. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Yeah. yeah, that is a yeah very beautiful thing to see. Oh, amazing. That's a great answer. <laughs> yep. So what you were saying was that people were engaging with the work and they were getting the concept um, and that you were kind of excited because you were like, that is what you were hoping people would actually yeah. engage with it and get it. But what were you saying is the other part as well? I suppose the other part is because is I was quite doubtful whether to actually go ahead with what I wanted to do for this series of work, with it being a bit of a niche taboo 
type of subject. Yeah. And it's, I suppose, the ones that don't agree with um, that type of artwork <laughs> and then type of yeah. words that I was using. Um, mm. So that that's a bit... Even though the, the positives outweigh it, it's still like, mm. should I be doing this? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very great. In, ma- like we're like masturbation, sexual yeah. uh, erotica and you know, sexual desires and pleasure. Yeah. And it's all them type yeah. of words covering my pieces. Um, so it's just that some of the, the looks that you see off people, they're just like, mm, I don't want to go near that one. That one looks a bit dodgy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever thought about whether it needs a trigger warning or not? Whether people are triggered by, you know, sexual words and things like that, whether they identify with it? Well, Has it ever come up or? When I was uh, still coming up with the basis for the for the series, um, there were mm. a few other ways I was going to take it. Um, but I was kind of not not talked out of it but it kind of swayed me slightly because they almost wanted to put me in my own room just with my collection of work because of that really? because of that matter yeah because it was going to be a bit more with some beads in the doorway <laughs> yeah <laughs> definitely yeah uh, the red light over it because <laughs> uh, i was going to take Sorry, it a little bit further <laughs> Yeah. Um, but I held myself yeah. back um, because I wouldn't want my work to be, um, I suppose, that that different and that, um, I can't think of the word. Um, so, uh, uh, yes, I suppose, yeah. What is it? And yeah. I want it to be able to be viewed by everyone. Yeah. Um, but still get the... The concept across without being too explicit <laughs> yeah 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 okay brilliant um but yeah the second half of the question is what don't you like about your work oh i'm just a generally negative person with my own work <laughs> uh, so it's always i like, think that's a good thing you know i think that's really valuable yeah, to be able to say it, it does make us this is my weaknesses next time. yeah yeah i think if you can't do that you're gonna plateau too soon whereas if you can criticize your own work and analyze what's not quite there for you and yeah I, th- I do i think that's i mean that's what i tried to base my youtube channel on is i tried to show my artwork and discuss this is what i did wrong and this is how i hid it yeah this is how i tried to avoid it you know so so yeah please be if you can share anything where you're like this is where i think i don't like this type of thing or this is what i don't like about the work if there is anything i'm not sure it is um, I suppose that every time I look at my piece it's like oh I wish that was a bit different or I wish that angle mm. was slightly uh, slightly rounder or I wish that yeah. I wish I'd moulded that a little bit better or smoothed that off a bit nicer um, mm. and then with the writing because I, I said before I handwrit all of it and there's yeah. 25 words that I used and each word got used mm, probably about 20 times each. So yeah. it's a lot of lot of writing <laughs> over and over and over again. Um, yeah. So sometimes that you'll start writing one word, you're like, mm, I've written the wrong letter. Oh, <laughs> right. So you like, try oh, and scrub no. a little bit out, but try not to get the underlayers as well. Yeah, and then it's like, oh, I was going to do that style yeah. writing on this one, and then so you have to carry on with what you just started, and then do that style on the next word. <laughs> that can get a bit. Yeah, and then you'll start writing a word in a certain colour because I'd I'd like go through a mix. I do one colour, yeah. cover it with the words, move on to another, and then mix it up a little mm. bit. I'd start writing, say at the top yeah. here, then I'd get down to the end of the word, like. Oh, I'm going over the same colour again now. You can't see the letters. <laughs> <laughs> because I think oh, after, wow. after so you've it's... been doing it for like three hours, four hours, five hours, <laughs> yeah. you just yeah. write automatically. You've got the words down in your head. You know exactly what the spelling is. And you just go for it. And then, yeah, you get into that little zone. Mm. And then the um, the things that you should be looking out for. <laughs> 
kind of get a bit missed sometimes, but <laughs> then you just put another layer on top of it and it's okay. <laughs> I was going to say, it sounds like a lot of technical things that the audience won't necessarily see that you're going to say, like you're saying, you know, I wish I would have done that angle differently or like, you know, certain things that you've had to hide. So it is things which you're specifically engaged with in the process of making it as opposed to saying, because with my work, I'll always say I fall short in how much I can um, take a drawing. For example, you commissioned me to do a drawing of your grandma when she passed yes, away yeah and and i was really grateful with that and i have asked permission to to bring this up just in case anyone was like oh that's insensitive <laughs> i did ask before and i could bring it up and um and what i think i told you that it took me eight attempts to do the drawing yeah um, because i just kept failing and it was you know and i realized afterwards there was probably the second attempt i could have got to the finishing point yeah but i just doubted myself and it is yeah, that lack exactly. of confidence yeah, sometimes it is, when it? it's, yeah. you know, yeah. And it takes a lot of vision to sort of say, this is the finish I'm going to push forward for. But it took, you know, seven failures to get to that final yeah, piece, the, the which final I'm going to show because I'm, you made. I'm so it's happy with it. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Cause I give yeah, it to I my auntie. Um, they mm. were the closest with her and she's got it on the bottom of her stairs and um, with a few other memorial things of hers so literally every morning yeah. and every night they they say good morning martha night martha um so it's like oh. it's, it's, it's a bit of their daily routine <laughs> just having that that painting yeah <laughs> it's such an honor for me i mean i was so thankful that you thought of me for that as well because it is uh it's just an honor to to kind of you know to actually do that for someone as well yeah but um but yeah, that's where I kind of, I'm very critical of my own ability to, I mean, I just showed you this framed piece where, I mean, I'm happy with it, but it's not very imaginative for the background. It's all shaded in to a certain extent and it's only got a certain amount of depth to it. Now, I shouldn't yeah, say this because this cool. is going to someone in the post soon. <laughs> this is being sent to a close friend of mine, but I'm still... It's still lovely. I it's, think you're, you think future, too much into I'm it. I'm trying to... <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to think, like, how do people who I really admire finish things? And I see mm. the difference between my work and theirs. I'm not trying to emulate theirs, but I'm thinking I'm not exploring possibilities enough mm. to try and show confidence in looser mark making around the edges and more, yeah. you know, highly rendered things in the centre. This, you know, what do you like and what don't you like about your own work is something I'm which not... I asked to... Sorry. So yeah. I, I, another thing uh, based on my... Uh, pieces was knowing when to stop <laughs> really yeah to yeah. not overdo it yeah because obviously yeah. I wanted as much surface covered as possible mm. with as many words and cause I, I added a few little doodles and uh, a few little pictures yeah. and you know I think every toilet well probably not so much nowadays but back in the day every one of them would have a smiley face <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hearts and like the knots and crosses things and um yeah so you get you get like 20 layers in and then you're looking around the piece mm. a bit cross-eyed after <laughs> um spending yeah many many hours uh writing the words on and then i'd stand it and i'd turn it around turn it around but there's not as much of that color by there but there's still about 20 yeah. like 15 layers underneath it and they'd be like so I have to get, I, I got a couple of my family, like, do you think that's covered enough? And I'm like, yeah, you need to stop now. So. Wow, yeah. But that yeah, was, it must be that so was hard thing. to know. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder as well, with you saying about the graffiti in the toilets, I wonder whether it's changed now, especially in high schools, to be including more emojis yeah. and things like that and Pepe the Frog and stuff like that. No, that you, you don't find it hardly at all no. now because I spoke to, um, no. like, there's a, couple of my friends have got like teenage um children and i i asked mm. them what the toilets were like now they're all just brand new and you don't they? see it no so i thought they'd be doing full sentences with emojis you know oh yeah well they might but they must clean them off <laughs> straight away because they're saying all the toilets yeah. are just like new i was just like when i was in oh. school christ you were lucky to find a blank bit of door <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly it'd be carved in with a compass wouldn't it just yeah you, they, they cover it, it to in. a certain degree then they start carving in yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. some of the wood yeah, one in the wood shop the... they had um i think someone took a chisel in there once 
really <laughs> they tried to chisel wow. a half, but it didn't quite work out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so tragic. I tried to put my heart on the wall, it failed. But yeah, oh, amazing. Well, I really appreciate you doing this. It's such a treat for me to catch up with you because it yeah. has been too long. And um, and I hope to have you on again as well, maybe yeah, after definitely. your masters or you know, see what's going on. Excellent. Is there any social media you'd like to promote? Uh, yeah, um, I, won't, I won't say my website because I'm still working on that. Um, okay. But I've got, well, I've actually got two um, Instagram pages. So it's Primrose Pots and Prints. Mm. That's mainly all my degree show works. So it's all the female form um, ceramic work. And I've got Lou Wills Art, which is my more erotic lino prints and embroidery hoop work. <laughs> and Brilliant. They're the two, the only two I'm really so using at the moment. Because this, just in case, I mean, if it isn't, but because this is going to be in several weeks, it's probably going to be maybe in a couple of months because I've had quite a few guests recently that I've recorded. Yeah. If your website is done in time, I don't know if you reckon in a month or so it'll be done, or do you reckon it's a way away? You're not sure? Yeah, I couldn't answer that at the moment. I am no? hopefully... I, hopefully I'll have it done in the next month or so, yeah. Because if it is, just in case, do you want to mention it just in case this is posted around the time when you have got it, you know, yeah. ready? Yeah, the website is the uh, same again, so it's www.primrosepotsandprints.co.uk. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Like I said, I'll definitely get you back on again because you've been lovely to talk to <laughs> and... Uh, and yeah, I just, I just appreciate you being here. Yeah, Thank you. no, it's been lovely. I'd like to do it again. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Bye. Bye now. <laughs> okay, so that's the episode done. Now, I thought that was a lovely conversation. I really appreciate her coming on. I love her work. I mean, I thought it was really beautiful. And I really enjoyed the discussion, especially about different types of artists. It was so easy to talk to her that I really had to trim down all of the conversation that we had. But I hope that you enjoyed the episode. If you did, then please leave a like, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell, and I will see you in the next episode.